Today, I'm about to get schooled in the art of the science behind the movies. And not just any science in any movie. This is the cosmic, earth-shaking science that is at the heart of the brand new movie, Ice Age Collision Course. Does Dad look like a problem to you? There she is, the mother of all asteroids, screaming towards us. Do you mind? Since the movie is full of crazy action and outer space science, I'm going to talk to a scientist to get the skinny on what's real and what's make-believe. Want to join me? Casey? Hi. Uh, sorry. I mean, welcome. I mean, <laughs> hello. My name is Dr. Julius Kosmowski, but everyone around here just calls me Dr. Cosmo. Well, nice to meet you, Dr. Cosmo. You as well. Now, I understand that today we're going to be doing some experiments, which is good, because that's my favorite part of science. Oh, cool. So you knew I was coming? Knew. I'm all set. Today I'm going to show you a meteorite demonstration. Move, move! Electromagnetic reaction. Levitation. Ooh. Maybe a snack? I don't know. Oh, boy. In fact, I've planned so much, we might have to bend the time-space continuum to fit it all in. It just means we have to hurry up. Here, let's put this on. Cool. Now I look like a real scientist. That's right. You look great. And it also shields the experiments from... Eating through our clothes. Okay. Uh, usually. <laughs> right this way. <laughs> See, even in a fun movie like Ice Age Collision Course, there are still real-life scientific concepts at play, so it's common for the filmmakers to reach out to experts like me to make sure that they get the science just right. Um, why? Exactly the right question. In fact, that's the perfect question. It's also my favorite question, right up there with how and what if. I mean, that's your basic scientific attitude. And it makes good movies even better. You mean getting the science right helps movie makers tell their story? Absolutely. Research is a big part of both worlds. Getting your facts straight is essential. Yeah, I guess with, like, meteors and stuff, you wouldn't want to just come close. Yeah, exactly. The science is critical, and teaching young scientists about it is my favorite part of my job. I thought you said experiments were your favorite. Right, they are, but enough about that. Follow me and I'll show you what happens when worlds collide. It's my favorite part! Great, that sounds awesome. <laughs> All right, Casey, welcome to Planet Cosmo! Look, Casey, when scientists discover things, we get to name them. It's cool. Oh, so you discovered this. Uh, kind of, sort of. I bought it, and then I filled it with sand, flour, chocolate powder. But anyway, look, I created this to show you what happens when a meteorite hits the surface. Just like in the movie. Doesn't that sound a little dangerous? You're right. Where are these? Because safety is always important, right? Yes, but just between you and me... You don't really need to wear them for this experiment, but it just makes us look super cool. <laughs> Check. So, where do we get those, like, meaty things? We make them. And by the way, the correct term for anything that enters our atmosphere that is a rock or a piece of ice, we call it meteor. And uh, usually it just burns up and it leaves a cool, bright trail in the sky. You mean, uh, like a shooting star? Yeah, yes, that's exactly right. Hey, look, shooting stars! Oh, oh I'm going to wish for the girl of my dreams! <laughs> It's waste is killing us! Now, some of them are small, but if one is big enough to hit the Earth, then we call it a meteorite. And it often leaves a crater like the ones in the movie. You want to try? Try? What do you mean? Well, let's see what happens when you hurl this cat's eye agate through limitless space onto the surface of planet Cosmo! Okay, I get it. That's just the beginning. Sometimes meteors come in groups, and we call those meteor showers. Meteor shower! Meteor shower? Crash! Oh my gosh, it's a meteor shower! They're all over the place! Um, What's happening? Those grapes? Yeah. Oh. There goes our snack. Sorry. Hey, can we try something a little bigger? Great idea. You know what? It's even more fun when it's in slow motion. <laughs> See what I mean? Totally. And it looks like the bigger the space junk, the bigger the crater. Right. I wonder if we have anything bigger 
We could use like a tow truck or a house. Nice example, Casey. I guess I won't be able to see the effects of jazz on bowling. Oh well, all in the name of science. I do have a question though. In the movie, all the meteorites are all on fire, mm -hmm. and then they mix Sid and Diego and Manny's hair puff up. Ah! You're so pretty. Oh. <laughs> Will you two quit it? <laughs> is that real too? Totally real. Now, in the movie, the static electricity is caused when Scrat sends an electrical storm to Earth. Ouch! But in real life, sometimes friction from the meteors falling through our atmosphere creates heat and static electricity. So when it comes... You know what? Let's get cleaned up, and I'll show you something really shocking. It's my favorite. Right this way. Cool. I really use a meteor shower myself. This is where we do our electronic experiments. Oh, uh, thanks, Kenny. We actually need the Van de Graaff generator now. Thank you. All right. Now remember, when working with electricity, you never, ever... Never, ever experiment with electricity without adult supervision? Yep, that's something I definitely know. Excellent, because remember what happened to Granny? Hey! Hurry, Granny! Don't you hurry me! I've just struck my lightning more times! Granny! The you've had hot breakfasts! Mm. I totally get it. No experimenting with lightning. Great. Now this is a Van de Graaff generator. By changing the polarity of the electric particles, it builds up static electricity. Like the kind when you rub a balloon on your hair and stick it to the wall? Exactly. Well, uh, sort of. See, the generator is looking for a place to discharge or empty the electricity it's building up. That's what that wand is there for. Go ahead and pick it up and put it next to the glow. Slowly. Very slowly. Whoa! Cool! That looks like lightning! Right. Because it was. And that little crack you heard? Mini thunder? Right. Yes. It, you see, it's the exact same principle. Wow, all this science. It really makes me feel... I'm inspired? Amazed? I'm starting to see what you mean. Science is awesome! Yes, it is. Though I was gonna say, it makes me feel hungry. Now, how about that snack I mentioned? Sure, thanks. Great. Now, I think I have some puffed rice in this cabinet here. Uh, go ahead and put this anywhere. Now, do you like broccoli or Brussels sprouts? Um, how about some salad? I think I've got some zucchini here and some carrot. Oh, oh uh, Casey, go ahead and pick those up and put them on top of the Van de Graaff generator, huh? Wait, but I, I thought I did. Did you? Let's uh, try again here. Let's see what happens. Kind of odd. Cool, right? That's the like charged ions pushing the aluminum pie pans away from each other. Just like if you tried to force the positive side of two magnets together, right? See? Go ahead, try. Yeah, they push away from each other. Right. Positive will always repel positive. Same with negative and negative. That's what the Van de Graaff is doing. It makes all the electric particles the same polarity, and that makes things repel each other. It works with confetti, cereal, almost anything. That's so great. I know, right? And you can even make this piece of paper act like a snake. See? Whoa! Go ahead, try it. So cool! See, it's all about the static electricity and all positively or all negatively charged ions. And when you put them together... Wait, what's that? Is that you? No, that's me. I'm late. Okay, I gotta go. But before we do, we have to clean up because that's a scientist's duty. Dr. Cosmo, thanks for everything today. This was incredible. I'm all charged up and not just because of the generator. It was great seeing how real science is used in big Hollywood movies. And I can't believe I got to create my own meteorite craters and explore the world of static electricity. And with my new lab coat, I don't think I'll ever forget Dr. Cosmo. Why don't you check out one more clip from Ice Age Collision Course? And thanks for being my study buddy today. For Orange Carpet, I'm Casey Simpson saying, keep asking why. Oh, and don't forget to say why not, and how come, and who's there, and what does this do? Oh, that's my favorite. <laughs>
Casey closed.